meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 6 et sec, notice which was sent to the record and the Star Ledger and was posted on the municipal bulletin board. Can I have the roll call, please? Councilwoman Von Rudenborg? Here. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Here. Deputy Mayor Sims? Here. Councilman Battaglia? Here. And Mayor Labrasse is absent. May we all stand for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, we have some folks here for Education Day. Could I ask that they please step forward? Welcome you and your Rabbi Mendy Kamenker with Chabad of Hackensack. Welcome. Thank you. All right, we're here to have a proclamation for the rabbi. Um, this is from the office of the mayor and the council of the city of Hackensack. Whereas the rabbi, Rabbi Menachem Nersen, a global spiritual leader and tireless advocate for youth around the world, emphasized the importance of education and good character. And whereas the educational system in addition to acquiring knowledge in preparation of career, must also focus on building character by emphasizing the cultivation of universal moral and ethical values, including those values known as the seven Noahide laws, which have often been cited as a guarantee of fundamental human rights. And whereas, in negotiation of Rabbi's understanding and lasting contributions, he has been awarded the Congressional Gold Medal, and Congress has established his birth date as a national day to raise awareness and strength, the education of our children. The President of the United States continues to pay recognition to Rabbi's visit by proclaiming the day Education and Sharing Day USA. And whereas the character of our young people is strengthened by serving a cause greater than self and by the anchor of virtues, including courage and compassion, by instilling a spirit of service in our children, we create a more optimistic future for them. Now, therefore, I, Kathleen Canestrino, Deputy Mayor of the City of Hackensack, along with the Mayor and the members of the City Council, do hereby proclaim the date of April 16th, 2019 as Education and Sharing Day, and call upon all Hackensack citizens to reach out to young people to work to create a more hopeful city for all. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, so much, so much appreciated, uh, like Deputy Mayor said. This is a day that is recognized by every president uh, since President Jimmy Carter, by both Congress and Senate, both from the Republican and the Democratic side. Um, it's recognizing the birthday of Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the rabbi of the Chabad movement, which was a champion of the idea that we should always recognize the goodness and kindness in each one of us and we should always remember that we were all created by one God, and we should appreciate and respect the idea that education is so important for our society and for our universe. So having and receiving this award today on behalf of the Chabad movement that has uh, branches all around the United States and all around the world is very much appreciated. Thank you very, very much.
Okay, before we begin, um, I would also like to ask if we could have a moment of silence. <coughs> Steve Savage, a member of the, our, our city employees working in our recreation department, his sister, Michelle Ray Givens, has passed away. So I ask that we all bow our heads for a moment of silence. All right, Dave, did you hear from another? I'm sorry. Oh, no. <coughs> his mother passed away. Okay, also, uh, Dave is reminding me, Bill White is named near and dear to all of our baseball fans in, in Hackensack, that his mother has also recently passed away. And again, for that, we'll bow another moment. Okay, with that being said, uh, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from the CAO and the regular meetings of March 26th, 2019. Can I have a motion? Okay. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Seeing none. City manager's report? Yes. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council and invited guests. This is the city manager's report for April 8th. 2019. Uh, first, Hackensack annual Easter egg hunt is scheduled for April 16th with a rain date of April 17th. It'll be held at Johnson uh, Park Turf Field. Two time slots depending on the age of your child. Please refer to hackensack.org for the detail in our website. The city has been awarded a 2018 NJDOT Municipal Aid Grant in the amount of $255,610 for the completion of our streetscape program. Improvements along Main Street between Barry Street and Banta. The HPAC will be hosting in the gallery event in honor of Earth Day on April 11th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Please stop by and see the work of many talented artists. The city will be hosting a food trek festival on, on Atlantic Street Park on June 1st from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. More details to come. The building department issued 155 notices written, 117 inspections made, two summonses issued, nine CCOs were done, 28 OPA requests were, were fulfilled. The city's pothole situation. Pothole repairs are still underway throughout the city. If you would like to report a pothole, please call our pothole hotline, 201-646-8058. On June 15th, the city's shred event is scheduled, June 15th from 1 p.m. in the Sears parking lot. And finally, the city's of Hackensack's 27th golf tournament is on Wednesday, June 12th. Please refer to the city's website for more details. This would complete the city manager's report. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ted. All right, so we'll move right into the docket. <clears throat> Moving forward to resolution 166-19. Final adoption of ordinance number 11, 2019, an ordinance amending and updating chapter 159 of the code of the city of Hackensack, towers and wreckers. All right, seeing, this ordinance calls for a public hearing. Seeing that this is the adoption final notice of this or particular ordinance, we uh, will have o an open session for the public to comment on this ordinance and this ordinance alone. May I have a motion to do so? Offer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. All right. Anyone who, from the public who wishes to speak on this ordinance and this ordinance alone, please step forward to the microphone and state your name and address for the public. Seeing none, may I have a motion to close to the public? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, may I now have a motion to approve this ordinance? Offer. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Hackensack, County Berg, and the State of New Jersey that Ordinance Number 11 2019 has passed its second and final reading and is hereby adopted. Moving on to Resolution 167 19. 167 19, final adoption of Ordinance Number 13 2019, an ordinance adopting the 463 Main Street Redevelopment Plan consisting of Block 411, Lots 16 and 18. Seeing that this is the final reading of this of this ordinance subject to adoption, uh, I need a motion to open to the public. I think we're opening to the public for the public hearing and then tabling the vote. All right, we'll open just for the public hearing. This particular uh, redevelopment plan has not been through the planning board yet, so we will just have the public hearing, but not a vote. So can I have a motion to open to the public? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Anyone from the public who would like to speak on this ordinance and this ordinance only, please come to the microphone and give your name and address for the public. Seeing none, can I have an offer? Can I have an offer to close to the public for this ordinance? Offer. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Again, we do. I need a motion to yes. table it. So I need a motion to table this. Offer. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Resolution 16819. Final adoption of ordinance number 14, 2019, an ordinance adopting the 17 Mercer Street redevelopment plan consisting of block 303, lot 14. All right, another final adoption, final reading of an ordinance. So may I have a motion to open to the public? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. If anyone wishes to speak on this ordinance and this ordinance only, please come to the microphone and give your name and address to the public. Seeing none, may I have a motion to close to the public? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion to adopt. May I have a motion to adopt? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? None. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Hackensack, County of Bergen, and State of New Jersey that Ordinance Number 14, 2019, has passed its second and final reading and is hereby adopted. Resolution 16919. Final adoption of Ordinance Number 15, 2019, an ordinance authorizing a 10 year tax exemption for a commercial pro project to be constructed by Heckler Holding Urban Renewal, an urban renewal entity pursuant to the long term tax exemption law. NJSA 40A colon 20-1 at SEC for 77 River Street. Another final reading. May I have a motion to open to the public? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. Anyone who we wishes to speak on this ordinance and this ordinance only, please step forward and give your name and address to the clerk. Seeing none, can I have an offer to, offer to close to the public? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> None. May I now have an option to, ad may I now have an offer to adopt? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Hackensack, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, that Ordinance Number 15, 2019 has passed its second and final reading and is hereby adopted. Resolution 170-19. Final adoption of ordinance number 16, 2019, an ordinance authorizing the private sale of certain property owned by the city of Hackensack, not required for public purpose, pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 12-13B. Final reading of this ordinance. May I have an offer to open to the public? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. Anyone who wishes to speak on this ordinance and this ordinance only, please step forward and give your name and address to the clerk. Seeing none, may I have an offer to close this meeting to the public? Offer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, may I have an offer to adopt this ordinance? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, Resolution 171-19. Nope. 
be it resolved by the City Council oh, of the City of Hackensack, County of Bergen, State of New Russian. Jersey, that Ordinance Number 16 2019 is passed its second and final reading and is hereby adopted. <coughs> now 17119. Final adoption of Ordinance Number 17 2019, an ordinance to amend Chapter 170 of the Code of the City of Hackensack, Vehicles and Traffic, to add a new handicapped parking space in Section 49.2, Parking for the Handicapped. Another final reading for an adoption of an ordinance. May I have an offer to please open to the public? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. Anyone who wishes to speak on this ordinance and this ordinance only, please come forward, give your name and address to the clerk. Seeing none, may I have an offer to close to the public? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, may I now have an offer to adopt this ordinance? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Hackensack, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, that ordinance number 17, 2019, has passed its second and final reading and is hereby adopted. Resolution 172-19. Final adoption of ordinance number 18, 2019, an ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank for the calendar year 2019 as per NJSA 40A colon 4-45.14. As this is the final reading of this ordinance, may I have an offer to open to the public? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, anyone who wishes to speak on this ordinance and this ordinance only, please come forward and give your name and address to the clerk. Seeing none, may I have an offer to close to the public? Offer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, may I have an offer to adopt this ordinance? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Hackensack, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, that Ordinance Number 18, 2019, has passed its second and final reading and is hereby adopted. Resolution 173-19. Resolution authorizing tax refunds for state board judgments. May I have an offer to approve? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Resolution. 174-19, resolution authorizing tax appeal attorney to settle the cases on the attached list dated March 29th, 2019, ever scheduled for trial or settlement. May I have an offer to approve? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Resolution number 175-19 is a resolution authorizing the health department refunds for death certificates and birth certificates. May I have an offer to approve? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Resolution 176-19 is emergency tempor temporary appropriation prior to the adoption of the budget per NJSA 40A 4-20. Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Resolution 177-19 is a resolution authorizing a crude time payout of $40,105.04 to tax assessor Art Carlson. May I have an offer to approve? Offer. offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Resolution 176-19, resolution authorizing the award of contract for rehabilitation plan for certain properties located between Prospect Street, Essex Street, Beach Street, and Railroad Ave, as determined by res Resolution 376-18. May I have an offer to approve? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Resolution 179-19 is a resolution authorizing payment of bills. May I have an offer to approve? Offer. Second. We need a roll call on this one. Councilwoman Von Rennenborg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Panastrino? Nay. Deputy Mayor Sims? Aye. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Okay. Any? We're, we'll be moving into the consent agenda. Does anyone on the council 
have any objections where anything needs to be removed from the consent agenda? All right, so all okay. <coughs> Consent agenda, agenda consists of resolution 18019 through 18419. 18019 is a resolution authorizing a raffle license for the Women's Rights Information Center and the Mali Foundation for Diabetes Research. Resolution 18119, resolution authorizing board and commission appointments for the Zoning Board and the Environmental Commission. Resolution 18219 is a resolution appointing Susan Banzen and Ryan Westra as members of the Bergen County Regional Community Development Committee. Resolution 18319 is a resolution urging the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities to require landline and wireless telephone service utilities to implement the necessary technology to block robocalls to their customers free of charge and to enact regulations to prevent robocalls from reaching customers. Resolution 18419 is a resolution authorizing an extension of leave of absence for Ricardo Terranova maintenance repair commencing on April 8th, 2019 and ending April 28th, 2019. May I have a motion to approve? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Okay. With that, I need a motion to open to the public. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. At this time, anyone who would like to speak, please come to the podium, give your name and address to the clerk, and you will have three minutes. Good evening. Good evening, Gary. Is this on? No. no. It's not it on? on? It should be on. Okay. Uh, Gary Trezano, Fairmount Avenue. I'm here as the chairman of the, of the Environmental Commission. I just have one question. After I spoke at the last meeting, I mentioned if and when we were going to have a budget or a resolution passed to have funding to uh, have the study on the greenhouse. I'm just going to ask right out right, are we going to do it at all for the benefit of the, of the population in Hackensack so my commission can move on? If we're not going to do it, please let us know. We've been, this has been going on since last uh, September, excuse me, on uh, trying to find out the proper procedures to get grants. And if you recall, going back, and I agree, we were going to try and have grants to uh, try and fund the study. Well, to date, nothing has happened. Every move that members of the commission have made to try and work to try and get this, this information has been blocked. Right down to the variance to try and have the commission be able to accept donations. And we asked the city council about that, and his response was right. He's got to ask, get the permission from the, from the mayor and council. So I ask, are you dedicated to the greenhouse? And if you are, can you please get a, a meeting set up at one of these future meetings to, to see what we're going to do? I know, granted, it's not a top priority for all the pressing matters in Hackensack. We agree. We understand that. But you reorganize the commission to move forward. Just to look good on paper doesn't count. We have a dedicated group. There's very passionate people that have degrees in the ecology and the sustainability of, of, the, of the earth. Not me, but my people do. So we're looking to move forward, okay? We wanted to get the community garden growing, going this season. No movement on that whatsoever. Our hands are tied, okay? We can't do anything. Now, the other issue, and I hope I have a little time, is if it's being stalled out because of the rumor about the YMCA, let's look at it another way. I'd like to be invited to a meeting on that issue, from what I've heard with the rumor, and that's all it is, okay? Because the way it sounds, it doesn't sound good. And I'm not going to go any further because there's people lined up. But please, as far as the greenhouse, if you're committed, let us know. Thank you. Gary, if I may. Um the, as far as the community garden goes, Ted, I mean, we discussed this, that should be moving forward. Uh, you know, Ted will be enabling that to move forward and, it, and that should be happening as we speak. As far as the, as far as the greenhouse goes, uh, the YMCA has been a resident in this city for years and years and years and years. And we promised them that we would give them uh, time to discuss what their proposal may be or may not be. Uh, Ted is going to reach out to them and make sure that it happens at the next committee of the whole meeting, which would be the, the, uh, the last week, last Tuesday in April. Um, following that, we will be able to definitely confirm whether the greenhouse is definitely going to be redone. 
Council is 100% behind that. We have to hear what the YMCA is proposing. What they're proposing, based on my very high level understanding, is what they would like to see there might mean moving the greenhouse just a little bit. And then they would be responsible for some of that cost. So what we are doing is we don't want to fund this $19,000 until we're sure it's going to stay exactly where it is or it's going to move a little bit. So it is our responsibility to allow the YMCA to come in and present their proposal. Hopefully they'll be here at the end of April. But yes, this council is 100% behind restoring this greenhouse, whether it's exactly where it is or whether it's going to be moving slightly. And we're also 100% behind the community garden. We appreciate tremendously all the efforts that the Environmental Commission has done, not only in this, but in all the facts that they presented to us on the North Bergen utility plant and, and everything else that they've been able to bring forward. We're greatly appreciative of that. And I'm sorry if you seem frustrated, but you know how they say government moves slow? It, bo it, it bothers me too. But we, we have neighbors and we have good neighbors and we have to maintain those relationships as well. So that's all we're asking is let them have the opportunity that we promised them to have to make this presentation. Please come to that meeting. Um, we will let you know if they can't make it, but we're assuming they will be here at the last Tuesday of April. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Gary. Good evening. Good evening. Joe Summers, 805 Summit Ave. I've been a resident, homeowner, taxpayer for over 40 years here. Uh, lived right up by Stuyve Park. Birthday, April 11th, Ecology. Green Acres, John Muir, Rachel Carson, James Audubon, Phillips Dial. We want Green Acres. So, <coughs> in general, or well, as a science teacher and uh, college biology professor for a total of 46 years, same as the number of chromosomes you have in your cells, Leo, 46. Uh, we are part of the Great Eastern Rainforest, runs from the Gulf of Mexico to Canada, the area east of the Appalachian Mountains. Your homework is to listen to Cat Stevens' song, A Very Young, What Will You Leave Us This Time? We're on, we only dance on this earth a short while. So what do we want to leave? Something Philip Stive would be proud of or not? Well, um, there's a proposal, I guess, for a dog park in Stive Park. It's a, an attractive nuisance. It would not fit. You need a larger park for that. Like Bergen County has Saddle River Park, Overpeck Park. There are homeowners and residents there. Children go there for summer camp programs, baseball. Children and parents are there. With a dog park, anyone could go there with any kind of dog. Who's going to check the dog for vaccines, etc.? If a dog bites another dog or a person, the city will be sued. Who's going to check for that? Nobody. So it'll be a site where there's concentrated canine feces and urine. It's not for that park. As my dad, a New York City fireman, would say, use your head. So we have uh, signatures of over 70 residents, homeowners and taxpayers, which I gave to Jacqueline Stout today, and everyone should have a copy. Mm -hmm. And. Um, <clears throat> We know there'll be a next planning meeting before anything gets done on Stuy Park that was promised to us. So we're looking forward to hearing about that. Um, also, I have a proposal for um, that northern part of Stuy Park, uh, since they were going to put a dog park there, but that's a, a non sequitur. You don't want that there. Um, so if we have just like McFall Environmental Center has, uh, a mixed hardwood, sugar maple, acer saccharum, forest. Uh, it would be beautiful. It would be a barrier, kind of root four, and a park barrier. And it would um, be beautiful. Plus, poor uh, Mike Allegretta and Denise Allegretta wouldn't have to look out on piles of dirty, garbagey, salty snow that would melt into Colesbrook and just be an eyesore. 
So we really want a quality of life improvement here. Thank you, Mr. Summers, but your I'm time is up, and we do have people waiting. Okay. Um, so you, you, you know that we're we've had a public hearing already about the Stuy Park yes, uh, proposal, and we're going to have another. Yes. Um, I'm going to refer a little bit to Steph, if you'd like to, to stay word, because uh, she's the one that's spearheading some of the improvements in Stuy Park, which are not only inclusive of the dog park, but also you know inclusive of bathroom renovations and providing some cover for when the children's <coughs> camp, et cetera, uh, are there in the summertime, and for residents as well. So I'll just turn it over to you for a minute. Steph. Absolutely. So we, we've been in contact, and I understand. So Sty Park, the dog park portion, was requested by residents that live near Sty Park um, as something that they want to see. And, you know, as the plans kind of came forward and there was a public meeting, there were some residents also that had opposition to it. So we're taking that into account as well. Um, so there's no plans. We, we, we made sure to not move forward on anything at this moment until we have another public meeting um, and we'll be reaching out to everyone to to get more input um, but there will be other you know improvements to the park that have to be made in regards to the playground area and the restrooms um, and things like that so yes. you know I think it's fair for everyone that lives in the area to have a voice so we'll yes. definitely let you know when the next meeting is so it's not a done deal no no, no. nothing's a done deal nothing is I, a done no, deal no, no not Thank yet you. no the bathrooms, yes, right? You're oh, okay. That I, area. I that Some of the renovations, yes, we're moving forward. But the, the dog park is still under discussion. Yeah. And I know there were concerns with the trees, um, but there are going to be some trees that have to be cut down the playground area for safety reasons for, you know, there's many children that play there, um, and there are, you know, a lot of trees and branches that are going to have to be trimmed and possibly removed. Um, so. And you'll replace them? I'm sure we can do Perfect. something like that, absolutely. Because absolutely. I was on our shade tree committee for almost 20 years. Yep. So, okay. Yep. That'd be a good absolutely. ethical thing to do. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. much. You're welcome. Good evening. My name is Ibeliz. I live in the Prospect, this Prospect. I know I get a, a car recently, and I have a problem to park in my car because I have limited time to park in the car in the garage, but they don't have a space for rent either. And now I have a problem. And recently I get a ticket. I get a car on Friday, and soon I get a ticket yesterday because I don't have any space to park in my car. I, I, what can I do now? Because I don't have a space for parking. So you're parking in the medical center garage? Is that yeah. where you normally That's park? That's what they say. I'm yes. supposed to parking in there, but I don't have, they don't have a space. No have a space to pay for rent and they don't have a space to 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 get there have, have, have you been have you've been do. parking there all along so this is recent this is a recent problem yes yeah, recently. Recently. I, mm -hmm. I get the car recently then when i park in the car yesterday i come here to get a, a permit mm -hmm. to parking mm -hmm. soon i park in the car they give me ticket they give you the permit they, they say this is for month monthly monthly parking <laughs> when i say okay can I, you give me monthly parking and they say they don't have a space what can i do now where i can park in my car i don't have a space to park in my car today i have a big problem because today i park in my car for two hours only and, and i take a shower very quick and i have to go down because i have to move in my car come on I don't have a space. What can I do now? I don't know. Right, could you leave your name and address information for the city manager, and he will and he will look into this and get back to you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Just give me your name, address, oh. and your cell number, and I'll call you. Okay. okay. The next person can come. My name. My name is Natasha Taylor. I live at 380 DeWolf Place. Um, this is my son Jefferson Taylor. We're here to speak about the traffic and ticketing issue around the schools, particularly for me, it's for Fairmount, but I have lots of friends who have kids in other schools. So Jefferson wanted to tell a story about something that happened because he's with me because this is who I drop off at Fairmount every day. My mom was dropping me off at school and she was parked in a regular space and a policeman came over and said, you can't park here. And he said, because you take too long. And my mom said, if you, I'm going to let my kid out, and then I'm going to leave. And then a policeman said, if you don't hurry up, I'm going to give you a ticket. And then my mom said, you can go, you can go to school. And, but, I didn't, but I didn't want to because I was nervous because the policeman was yelling. 
So this is uh, his first encounter with a police officer in the community that I've lived here my entire life. I was born at Hackensack Hospital. I went to all the schools. I went to college in Florida and I came back and bought a house here because this is where I wanted to raise my kids. So for that being his first encounter, and that's unacceptable for me. Growing up, I knew all the police officers. I knew their names. They knew me, they know my parents. Um, I understand that there's an issue with the traffic. I'm not part of that issue. I don't double park. My son's the shortest of my three kids, so I'm nervous to drop him off in the middle of the street because I know someone might hit him. Um, so I don't double park. I don't park where I'm not supposed to. I always get there early. My husband says, why do you get there so early? Because I try to find a spot that's legal so I can get out of the way, and that's even an issue. So I understand if the police are being directed to ticket or, I don't know what it is, but something needs to be fixed. It can't stay that way. People, I, I got a ticket mailed to my house that makes no sense, because it was mailed. If I was parked somewhere that I wasn't supposed to, why didn't they hand it to me? Um, you know, what I'm hearing from lots of people is that it's, it's direction that they're getting directly from the city council, the police. I think that creates a wedge between the community and the police. I don't think that's a good idea, especially not right now with the climate of the country. I think that we should be able to speak and communicate and we can find solutions for things. The way that it is right now, it's a problem. And um, I don't think, I'm, I'm gonna fight the ticket that I got because I didn't do anything wrong. But um, we well, need to- I, I'm gonna let the city let, manager address your issue because the police department, just so you know, they do not get direction from the city council. There's no way that they get direction from the city council. Okay. Um, let me explain a couple of things. The concern of the mayor and council is the safety of these children being unloaded or loaded at these schools. And, and unfortunately, there is not a great design of these schools because they were built years and years ago. So there isn't a, a safety lane or the conditions that would make this easy for us. We've also identified that there's a condition contractually with the educators in the school of when they punch in so they can receive these kids. One of the things that, that gentleman nodding his head in the middle of these two fine ladies is our officer in charge, Captain Basiglia. We had a meeting this morning, or uh, Monday morning. So one of the concerns is, is that the school uh, and the teachers don't really punch in until 8.20, so they won't receive kids. So we basically have 10 minutes to unload 610 children into these schools. Unacceptable. There's no way we can do that. It's not safe. So the question that the police department is getting pressure to enforce summonses to people, that is not true. The, the pressure is to make sure that we get all these kids into school, educate them well, and get them home safe. That's our concern. If you're double parking or breaking the law, that's up to the officer and their discretion. If you have a complaint about a police officer, please see the officer in charge now, and he will certainly take your complaint, and they'll investigate it. And at this point, you, if you feel that you are wrong, you should plead not guilty and go to court. And, oh, I am. And, oh, yeah. great. I've already done That's it. what the system is designed. But I just to know if something else was going to be done about the, yes. like, the school and dropping them off and the drop-off. Two, off two of our council members, the deputy mayor and, and, and Councilwoman Von Rudenberg, meet with the Board of Education. Captain Basigli is going to be invited to this. We're going to try to find solutions. Um, our lieutenant over there has done research with the other school system. We are completely engaged in the process of trying to find solutions. There are three components of traffic, engineering, enforcement, and education. And here in the city of Hackensack, all of those compliances are going to have to be met. But I do understand, and I take your complaint very seriously, ma'am. Thank you very much. And just so you know, this is a problem really at all of the elementary schools. Oh, it's, not just a, it's not just a Fairmount school. And, it, and it's something that we really, really need to address. I mean, we've seen some photos that we're taking that really, as you said, you're concerned, and, and, and I appreciate what you're saying, that you get there early. And we're concerned. We're concerned about some of, of the traffic that we see there, some of the illegal U-turns that are being made very quickly. You know, parents have to get to work. We all understand that. So we need to work together, the, the city and the school, to come up with a, an acceptable plan that meets the needs of the parents and definitely guarantees <coughs> the safety of the children. We actually had a discussion about this at the Committee of the Whole, the meeting that we had prior to this, and the police department presented some valuable information and some ideas. And yes, uh, Councilwoman Von Rudenberg and myself, we meet with the Board of Ed monthly, and this is something we're hoping we can talk to them and see if we can come up with 
for now, an intermediate plan, but a long range plan. How are we really gonna solve this? Forget band-aids and let's try this for a little while. We need to understand how to really fix the problem and make it safe for the children and easier for the parents as well. So that's high on our agenda. And again, I reinforce what the city manager said, if you had an issue with a particular police officer or a problem with a ticket, please make it is your responsibility. I agree, handle it, talk to the proper authorities and I'm sure you'll get it resolved. Thank, Thank you. you. Jeff and Tasha, um, on behalf of this council, I want to apologize for that police officer talking in that type of manner to you. Um, if you talk to the captain over there, he'll look into it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mary Walsh, 64 Davis Avenue, Hackensack, New Jersey. I'm a member of the Shade Tree Committee in Hackensack, and I'm also the conservation co-chair of the local Sierra Club. I'm here to talk about the proposal for the dog park in Stuy Park. I have three main concerns. I am a resident of Davis Avenue. About, I live about three blocks from Stuy Park. I've been there for almost 20 years. Stuyve, as you know, is just a stone's throw to Route 4. And where we live, we hear Route 4 24 hours a day. So if you take down those trees, even though there's a few trees, you're contribute, you're, if the trees stay, they have the function of cleaning the air. So even though there's not that many of them, we need, a, we need the service of these few trees. The other concern is the flooding because the trees absorb the water. So if you take down the trees, now you've increased your flooding. So let's assume you put in an impervious surface where the trees stand now. The likelihood of people picking up the dog poop is not that great. If you go to Bridgewood or you go to Overpeck, you see that not everybody picks up the dog poop. So the poop will then run into Coles Creek. Coles Creek connects to the Hackensack River, which dumps into the Oradell Reservoir. So I'm not really a very big fan of any, even the smallest amount of poop going into my drinking water. Let's, let's assume that you use an impervious surface. You'll have the same situation, but this time the dog urine will be running into the creek. It's really not a good idea. On Sunday, I was walking with one of the managers from Suez at the reservoir up in Old Tapan, and there's a lot of property around the different reservoirs, and they absolutely refuse to let any dogs go near the reservoir for the, exactly the reason why I'm that I'm telling you. You have areas in Fashini and Johnson Park where the trees are already now removed, where you don't have the proximity to the creek. So you have the perfect place to put a dog park if people in Hackensack want it. When I had Patrick the Wheaton Terrier for 14 years, I used to drive to those dog parks if I wanted to take him to a dog park. So it's really not that far for people to drive to Fashini or Johnson Park. My last point has to do with the, remo the pruning of the trees in Stibe. Two, of the mem two or three of the members of the Shade Tree just came back from training, so, and as well as the DPW, so they know how to prune the trees. So it's not necessary to take them out. Those trees have, been, have taken dozens of years to grow, and it would really be a crime to start slashing them down just because of a branch or two. Well, thank you very much for your time. I'm sorry, but your three minutes are up, and we do have a crowd. Um, as we mentioned earlier, you know there will be a subsequent hearing. You know nothing is is carved in stone at this point. We're still looking at various options as well. So you know we will keep you ad the public advised as to when the next meeting is going to be, and very interested to hear and share your concerns. Absolutely, Steph. Do you have anything to add? No, absolutely. Thank we'll let you know when the next meeting is. Thank you for bringing those okay. issues forward. We appreciate it. Hello, uh, Bernadette Bracken, 37 Poplar Avenue. 
I'm the chairwoman of the Shade Tree Committee, and I'd also like to voice some concerns about this uh, dog park proposal at Stye Park. Um, currently, the plan is to cut down a few of the smaller trees in that uh, on the northwest side of the park. And um, I think that that's not a great idea because parks are the only place in the city where trees can grow unobstructed by wires or sidewalks or streets. And it would really be a shame to not let trees grow to their full potential in the only space that they are available to grow to that size. And additionally, what Mary was saying is a problem with flooding. On average, even a small tree can absorb 3,000 gallons of water a year. And I would have concerns with there being flooding if any trees were taken out from that area that is adjacent to a creek. So um, I think there's probably better spots for a dog park um, within the city. And just today, the shade um, the city was accredited as a Shade Tree City USA, and um, we were congratulated on our stewardship of our trees. And I think it would be a shame if we cut down trees just as we're being congratulated for this. Um, and then I hope that in the future, the Shade Tree Advisory Committee can work together with the council when there's any plans pertaining to cutting down or putting up or taking care of trees on the city property, which is what the code intended for our committee to do. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Good evening. My name is Brian Cavallo, uh, 427 Simons Avenue, Hackensack, New Jersey, 35, correction, 45 year resident. And I'm also the union president. Uh, let me start by telling you that we come here tonight not to be a problem, but to be part of a solution. It is my understanding that yesterday the city manager and our officer in charge, Captain Pisiglio, had a productive meeting. I was advised that you assured him that the city will be hiring and promoting in the near future. I hope this is the first step to many more come, excuse me, many more to come, getting the department where it needs to be. If you aren't aware, for the first time in over 35 years, our police department has less than 100 officers. <coughs> our population is continuing to grow, but unfortunately, <coughs> our department is not following. Because we are understaffed, we are faced with a multitude of problems. Each of our four investigative divisions are short, supervisors and detectives. <coughs> our patrol division is also <coughs> short supervisors and officers. In 2016, our patrol captain conducted a study which revealed the proper number of officers that should be on the road to handle our ever-growing call volume should be seven. Last year, the department lowered the minimum down to six to reduce overtime caused by the city not replacing officers. Even after lowering the manpower on the road, overtime has become rampant. Our officers are becoming burnt out, which leads to more sick time, which in turn creates more overtime. The lock <clears throat> the lack of manpower also leaves us with an insufficient number of officers to handle calls. Officers are forced to respond to domestic violence calls, fights, and robberies without adequate backup. Our response time has increased and calls for service hold longer than in the past. Residents requiring police assistance have to wait longer. Even though Hackensack is a city, it still demands a service-oriented policing that many other Bergen County towns are accustomed to. It's extremely difficult to provide that when officers are responding from call to call. The only solution is to put more officers on the road. Currently, the department has a class two officer who is ready to transition over to a full-time officer, but the city has not moved forward with his hiring process. Recently, the Civil Service Commission reinstated three of our officers. One of the officers has been found innocent of all charges brought against him by the judge and the Civil Service Commission. I urge you to abide by the commission's decision and reinstate the officer. We have three supervisors working in place of higher ranking officers. Out of the six specialized divisions, we currently have only five sergeants assigned to them. Patrol is short at least two sergeants and can rarely use four more so the road could be staffed with supervisors 24 hours a day. Unfortunately, we cannot promote supervisors if we don't hire officers to take their place. The confidence has the PBA has confidence in our current command staff. 
<laughs> we believe that if they are left to run the department without interference, the pieces will begin to fall in place. Mr. Ehrenberg, we ask that you keep your word to promote and fully staff our department. The safety of our residents and service to our residents are our main goal. Succession planning is a must, not an option. We must prepare for years to come. As our city continues to grow, we need to grow as well. Only then will we be able to properly focus on these concerns. I want to thank you for allowing me this time to address the council, and we look forward to working together to fulfill this objective. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ted, do you have any comment? I think that, in all fairness, um, the, my first meeting with um, the officer in charge was productive. He highlights some points that we are privately addressing. Obviously, there's some concerns here. Um, I've stated in the past that the, documentation, the documentation that proves that the, the, we have these issues, they will be immediately addressed. Um, I don't have any of that. I have requested that information numerous times and never been presented with any, but that's for another day. However, we will address these issues, and obviously there's some issues that, that are not publicly known that need to be addressed internally. Once we get these addressed, well, we've already made one promotion to the rank of captain at the next CAL meeting. Um, the, uh, the new captain, DeWitt, will be here. Um, we're going to certify the list. Obviously, you've had a discussion with your officer in charge and your command staff, so you know all of that. But um, I, I thank you for your time. Thank you, Ted. Good evening. My name is Michael Scott James Vickery. I live at 177 Ross Avenue here in Hackensack. And I really um, had no intention of speaking tonight, but then Jefferson took the microphone. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm a parent of three amazing children that attend every level of the Hackensack schools, elementary, middle school, and junior high. And unfortunately, I get to fight the traffic every day in one regard or another and it is a problem and i've actually received about three tickets myself um at, i guess all of the schools um and it is a problem but i will tell you and the lady behind me that's coming jefferson um engaged me to be able to sorry i'm going to talk to him for just a second mm -hmm. mind, engaged me to be a part of a committee at fairmount and we are working very, very, very hard to come up with a solution so that your mama doesn't have to get a ticket. We are working very hard. She's going to, I'm sure, talk about it in just a second. A lot of really smart people are trying to figure it out. And I promise you that I talk to lots of nice police officers all the time. And it was not their intention that day. They must have been having a really bad day, but I promise you they didn't want to scare you that day. But we are going to fix the problem. It's a problem at all of the schools, and we're working. And that's one of many reasons why I'm running to be a school board member. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Scott. Hi, I'm Pedro Del Vecchio, 19 Spring Valley Avenue. And I was got a nice introduction that I don't know, we'll have to earn it now. Um, so yes, we assembled a committee at Fairmount as part of the PTA to discuss the traffic issues, which have been a problem since I started as a parent in 2000, so 19 years and running. Um, fortunately, I walk, so it's not my problem, but I see it, and it's very, very dangerous. Um, so we assembled a committee. We had about 20, 20, 20, 20 or so, 20 some odd people who attended, which is more than we get for typical PTA meetings because that's, it's that important to people. So um, we talked about some solutions and everyone listed the first two problems were drivers, speeding or double parking and those kinds of things. So we, we recognize, you know, um, the ma city manager mentioned education. So we understand that that's a problem, but we haven't made any headway on that. The officers are out there all the time. They are ticketing, they are redirecting. You know, are they making mistakes that I don't, I can't witness to or not, but it's not enough. We have come up with some ideas that we think will create some sort of structural changes around Fairmount School. Um, I'm not as familiar, I mean, the middle school I'm familiar with, but I have no ideas right yet. Um, so um, the first one is to discuss the street sweeping scheduling. So I know on Main Street and in the business areas, <clears throat> street sweeping is diverted during the busiest times of the day to allow for traffic. And I think we need that around the schools as well. 
Um, two days a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, there's parking is cut in half for street sweeping. And we feel like the time could be tweaked and that could alleviate a lot of the problem. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about drop-off zones and I know it's been tried before to have a drop-off zone in front of the school to move the buses that pull up there once uh, the charter school and some special education buses that come through. Um, we've also discussed the possibility of having Poplar Avenue reopened and flowing in a westward direction. So many years ago, not that many years ago, Elm Avenue was made one way eastbound and there was no corridor to take up that westbound traffic. As narrow of a road as it was, it was there was traffic going that direction. So now between Spring Valley Avenue and Ross Avenue, you only have Airmont Avenue that you can go westbound on. So it just forces all the traffic there. And it's a really bad situation. Now, simple solution, open up the street, in my opinion, open up the street and that, but we also have to think about the parking. So I know many teachers need to park on Poplar Avenue, so we'd have to look at how to replace the parking that might be lost if that were made one way. I have some very crude renditions of the area. I am not an engineer, I'm a first grade teacher. My first graders would get this, and plus my printer wasn't working. But I'm gonna hand them to you anyway, and I can email you slightly better copies of one of the suggestions that we came up with, but the first thing we'd really like you to look at is rerouting the street sweeping so we have um, we don't have that in interrupting all the time. Thank you very much, and I think Thank you. I think your committee has come up with some excellent solutions. I think we have to find a good way to communicate back and forth. I mean, because this is the first that we're hearing about this, and I can see what you're saying about street sweeping. I mean, that. I think, Ted, should be something we should be able to handle in those early morning times. That, that You're absolutely right. It doesn't make sense for us to be in your way at that point mm -hmm. if we can help it. Yeah. Now, I know that there have been other folks that raised other concerns about some of the, the changes that this one-way traffic has caused in that particular area. Mm -hmm. So, Ted, maybe it would be worthwhile to have traffic take a look at that again and how that flow of traffic really is and was. I mean, it wasn't one way for, again, I've right. lived in Hackensack too for right. 40, well, 47 I, I just, years I want now. To so. that uh, Captain Foley did send two of her officers to discuss it with us. So they gave us some of their feedback as well. So we did well, have- Well, keep us in the loop, mm -hmm. especially with things like street sweeping, whatever. Whatever yeah. ideas you come up with, please communicate you know, with the city manager. The council will be copied Absolutely. on those things as well. Because we're, you know, we, we, we did have a discussion at the Committee of the Whole. I wish you guys were here mm -hmm. because the, the police did it. It did a good job of gathering facts from other towns and talking about some different ideas. Mm -hmm. And we need more of that. You know, yeah. we need more. Uh, and usually at our Committee of the Whole, there's more engagement with the public. You know, we're not so busy passing resolutions right. so we could talk about things. And I think if we get that on our agenda again, you know, we should get the names of these folks, Ted's, and make sure that you're invited or know that they're aware of you, yourself, and mm -hmm. anyone on any other committees that you know of out okay. there. And you know we, we've got to work together. We all want our children to be safe, and we want our parents to be happy. People have to get to work, or they have other things they have to get to. So coming up with a, a, a plan that makes sense for everyone has to be a priority for all of us. And, and thanks for your hard work and your good ideas. Thank we you. appreciate Thank you. it. Excuse my drawings again. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. Some of those are the best, right? The primitive drawings are frequently the best. Hi, Louis DeCepola, 314 Third Street, Hackensack. I, I also wanted, I came here tonight to um, voice my opposition to, to uh, removal of any trees for any dog park or any playground. Um, we already have a scarcity of trees, I believe, in, the, in our parks in Hackensack in general. And uh, you previously heard from a couple members of the Shade Tree Committee. I sit on the Environmental Commission. And um, so my second point that I want to make is that neither the commission nor the committee were consulted on this proposal. I know there was a meeting in January, which I was not able to attend, but I did catch up on it on the video. So I'm, I got up to date on the, uh, on the topic and the proposal. I believe there's an engineer who, who presented the proposal that evening. Um, but I, I just wanted to say that, I mean, if you look at the duties of the Environmental Commission, I just want to read one, one line, study and make recommendations for open space preservation and protection of flora and fauna. And then the, if you look at the Shade Tree Committee, um, one of their duties is to establish programs for protection and preservation of, his, of existing shade trees. So I just ask that, you know, hopefully we can work together. I'm happy to hear that there is gonna be another public meeting. So I look forward to uh, discussing this again in the future. Thank you. Thank you, and I think 
Jeff, we should make sure we reach out to the Shade Tree and the Environmental Commission and keep you notified of any of the subsequent meetings because you are you are an important part of all of this decision making, and we, we do want to hear your voices. And I'm sorry if if that was overlooked last time, but we'll make sure you're here next time. Thank you. Richard Grant, 290 Anderson Street. I'd like to share information about an organization I've become aware of because it seems like a good time for it because at the last meeting, the budget presentation, I got the impression Hackensack is considering more quality of life projects. At this meeting, Environmental Commission, a shredding day, and a community garden were mentioned, and all of those are worth points in a certification system developed by Sustainable Jersey. It's an organization that if, when a municipality becomes an active participant, they not only have a point-based certification system, they have many free uh, training resources in different formats, webinars, uh, meeting, meetings, uh, recorded presentations. They also have access to grants and other financial incentives. And uh, how it works is a municipality passes a resolution, registers with the group, selects actions to take, which will clearly be based upon need and their value for the money spent, and creates a green team for a resolution or an ordinance to coordinate the activities and submits an application. It, uh, it's an annual cycle that starts in June and goes through December. Certification lasts three years, and then recertification is needed. And to give you an idea of whether it's worth doing, I just want to mention 11 other municipalities in New Jersey that uh, have the second level, the silver certification. Uh, in Bergen County, Glen Rock, Ridgewood, and Wyckoff. Other county seats, Camden, Cape May, Jersey City, Morristown, and Mytali, and also Hoboken, Princeton, and Red Bank. Uh, it is worth doing, I believe, because your quality of life projects might be viewed as one-offs, and if they're considered as in inter interrelated upgrades, to sustainability, to economic, environmental, and social sustainability, they work together. Plus, that organization is an amazing resource of expertise. They can tell you what's worked elsewhere, what's the low-hanging fruit, uh, how much it basically cost. So it's more organized. It's a more systematic way of improving the quality of life in uh, this uh, Hackensack. I should mention, I'm not asking you to join because back in 2010, Hackensack did register. And I, I don't know what happened since then. Apparently, if you go by the, their website, a green team wasn't formed and uh, actions weren't selected. And then in the records of a public meeting in early 2013, somebody brought it up and the then city manager said, I'll get back to you and uh, nothing happened. So to my knowledge, we're registered as a participant of Sustainable Jersey, but we're not an active one. And it's a shame because I think a lot of the projects we've done put us maybe halfway there to getting a bronze certification. Thank I, you. Thank you so much, Mr. Grant. Ted, let's make a note of that Sustainable Jersey and maybe we can just explore it a little further and see. I mean, at 2010, 2013, that's a little before this council's time. But um, if it has to be reinitiated, I mean, especially now that we have the Environmental Commission that's so active and our, straight, our Shade Tree Committee is reinvigorated again. So, you know, we have a lot of folks in the city who are working towards uh, helping us achieve some great projects here. And I know from my meetings at Fairley that, you know, they have, they're, they're big on sustainable projects as well and they want to be more involved, you know, on the Hackensack side as well. So uh, perhaps we can get credit for some of the work that's being done both cooperatively here and, and with the university as well. So thank you for bringing that to our attention, Mr. Green. Yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Perry Jackson. And uh, a couple questions as well as concerns. Um, I believe in equal pay for equal stay. Uh, you know, as long as you're on, you know, any committee, any staff, any, you know, um, any organizations, um, panel of people, you know, one should uh, definitely get the pay and the salary that they highly do. Um, the other thing is that uh, YMCA, we do have that here. They used to have the YMCA, y, YWCA, 
we don't have a building for that purpose, uh, a YWCA. And there are places in Patterson that have places for women who have uh, children and don't know how to have no place to stay. And they give that as an option for them to reside there while working out their details. Um, the other thing is, is that um, they say uh, with um, the situation with uh, say farewell to welfare, there should be a policy say, you know, farewell well to welfare, but say hello to a new policy that's even better than that one that was previously in place. Um, diversity and inclusion, I believe in that. Um, it was read about that in a paper where Jesse Jackson shared that. And, uh, you know, we did have another person who was a camera person here. I don't know if they actually got paid or do get paid, but I believe it's on cable vision, it's on um, uh, Verizon, and maybe segments of the city hall meetings can be used for the Hackstack Middle School to share in their class participation sessions, okay? Thank you, sir. Have a good night. I'm Rich. Uh, Serbo, 46 Spring Valley Ave, Hackensack. Uh, welcome to everybody uh, on our video camera. I mean, it's uh, we need to include uh, everyone, not just people that come to our meeting, because very few people come here. Okay, so I just want to comment on certain things. That it's I think it's awful that we only have three uh, minutes here. I've I've mentioned this many times before that. I think there was a change uh, last year from five minutes to three minutes. Uh, I think it's uh, it's too uh, restricted uh, for for citizens to mention things. There's so many things to mention. I mean, I guess uh, people come up and they mention one thing, but the, but there's just too much to comment on to to limit people to three minutes. So uh, I'll start with. Uh, with everything that's that's going on here, and I wanted to ask, uh, I wasn't here for the uh, talk uh, work session. And what is a resolution to reject hate within the city of of Hackensack? I, I hated a dinner I had just the other night. So what the hell does that mean that we're going to reject hate in within the city of Hackensack? Can can you can you reflect on that for me, somebody? I mean, I'll, I'll wait because no, no, I we'll know wait. it's. We'll, why don't you give us your three minutes worth and, and we'll answer your question. Okay, you have to correct. Start. Okay, but that's that's that shocked me seeing that because uh, hate is uh, is a is a reaction uh, for many things and, and people hate things. Uh, so what? Okay, to to make it a resolution is beyond belief. Okay. A couple other things. Uh, the dog park, I think, is a great idea. I, I know there's opposition to it, but it's actually the perfect place for a dog park. It's, it's just wonderful. The one in Maywood is fantastic. I go to uh, Memorial Park uh, regularly uh, to uh, work out. There's a walking track there. There's uh, basketball courts. And there's a dog park there. It's beautiful. It, it, it's it's social, it, it, it's, it's clean, it's, it's beautiful, and I suggest you go forward, Stephanie, with the dog park. The trees can be uh, uh, brought back. You can, you can replant things and uh, make that uh, vibrant again when it comes to uh, um, trees. And uh, speaking of trees, I mean, if the, if the shade tree... Uh, a committee is so uh, interested in trees, why aren't they replacing trees that, that are cut down? Like Spring Valley Avenue, they cut the trees down and they don't replace them, okay? So uh, if they're gonna be serious about the shade tree uh, uh, conversation, why not replace trees once they're cut down all over the city? Uh, all right, I, I'm sorry. I'm cut Rich, off already? Yes, your, your three minutes are up. This hey, is ridiculous. Hey, well, I started by saying that three minutes is not enough. And, and it's not. You should vote on it back to at least five. All right, Rich. Five. Rich, okay. three minutes are up. And as you well know, this council sits here at the end of each meeting, and we will stay here as long as anyone wishes to speak to us. So anyone, again, there's, I see some new folks here tonight. Anyone that doesn't feel that they were heard enough, 
we will stay here as long as you like and engage in a conversation. And Rich, you quite well know that. Ted, could you, you answer his yep. a question about this resolution that other towns have passed? Just, I'm sorry, sir, just give us a minute um, and what this resolution is about. There is a movement in Bergen County and shared with us from our neighbors at Teaneck is a resolution rejecting hate within the township, in our case, they're proposing um, in the city of Hackensack. And the resolution goes through a, a pretty lengthy dissertation, but basically the short version of it, America is a mosaic of people from every corner of the globe and a place where it strives for racial, eth ethical, uh, cultural, and religious acceptance. Um, this recognizes the violence against others due to their identity and not attempting to, to um, withhold the American, uphold the American values. Rejects hate in all forms, especially the type that results in violence against people of any particular group. Rejects the labeling of groups um, as being less valued than others. Bullying and the values of diverse cultural um, communities that, that are enriched by having different people from different cultures and different beliefs. So it's a supporting document, just like we have every spring breast cancer awareness and we pass out these pink ribbons and flowers to make people think that maybe we should give that some more consideration and, and try to, you know, no one's perfect, we, but we all should be better. And I think that that's the message and that's what this was attempted to be. Thank you, Ted. I'm sorry. Eric Martindale, uh, 137 Woodland Avenue. I live in Maywood. I'm here to make a presentation on the River Street Railroad trestle I have eight copies. Um, construction is ongoing at the former record campus and the approved plan calls for a pedestrian access along the railroad from River Street to the riverfront. And that, and that, that's a great plan. The, the, plan is, the problem is the plan is for pedestrians to cross the busy four lane road to get from the downtown to the riverfront. So they want them crossing at the corner of Mercer Street at a four-lane uh, road. Well, there's a two-lane railroad trestle. It's only 15 years old, right there. Only one lane is used with a railroad. The other lane is sitting there empty, ready to be used for pedestrians. It's an amazing opportunity, sitting right there in plain sight. It's kind of a mini version of uh, what Newark is doing, building a Greenway Park over Route 21, MacArthur Highway. I just looked at it, and I've seen that trestle countless times, and I just looked at it and said, wow, that's a link from the downtown to the riverfront. So I asked that the city take a look at this, pass a resolution to support it, and then approach the railroad with the resolution in hand to try to get their cooperation. Now, I've surveyed the railroad online all the way up to the New York State border. Um, now, we're not asking for a pedestrian crossing of the tracks. We just want to use land alongside the tracks. Nevertheless, the, the railroad has granted pedestrian crossings in numerous spots, commercial and residential properties, golf courses that are on both sides of the railroad where the golfers and the golf courts cross over the tracks. The Appalachian Trail crosses the Susquehanna Railroad. It's a designated crossing. So I don't want to hear from the railroad that uh, you can't walk along the side of the railroad. All you got to do is put a fence there, and it can easily be done. Um, this is kind of a, we heard about sustainable Jersey. Well, this, this is a real sustainable project, and there's, there's a lot of interest that seem to want to have a connection between the downtown and the river. The Main Street uh, Business Alliance, um, even the county of Bergen, has expressed an interest for a link to the waterfront and there's going to be a pathway along the river for the former record campus. So this all ties in, and there's, there's no need to actually build a bridge or, or an island in the street, which the county was thinking of doing when the, tr the trestle is right there. It can be wide enough that uh, police vehicles and ambulances can use it if they have to get back there for any reason. It's certainly strong enough to hold the train. So. Um, there's a lot of construction going on in the downtown, and there's a lot of new residents coming in. Just give me 15 seconds. And the residents need green space, they need access to the river, they need places to walk their dog. You have uh, 
Fashini Park right there and you know, Fashini Park would probably be, be a great spot for a dog walk, dog, a dog park. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. As you mentioned, you know, we have had some discussions with the county on something like this because they have been interested in this as well. Um, we'll certainly take into consideration everything you presented here and talk to them some more about it. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening again. Kathleen Salvo, 47 Lourdes Street, Hackensack. It's too bad some of these people that were concerned weren't here at 6 o'clock because we had a very productive um, dialogue what's going to happen and it should be it should be done soon we should ha have a meeting and take and address this very soon a um, couple of things and I, I have to talk fast because I haven't been here in a couple of months uh, March 12th the shelter went up in front of the uh, fire department for the mothers who go to the clinic and I thank you for that but we have to get rid of the bench that's still there that shouldn't be also the light went up on first street and that's a good safety I'm very sad that we lost the police director and I think maybe because he was short of a lot of men. And this is the first time in the history that we've had less than 100 men. And we should move forward on this. You have so many more people coming in. They're so, Kathy, in the day when your husband was a policeman, we had more than 100 men. And that was like 100 years ago, because I was young then. Not 100 years ago. Uh, it was, it was, I was. When, so we really need to, to move on and give, the, and give this police department the help that they need. We're, we're too many people, and during the day, we flood to all these people that come in for the, for the county. So that needs to be addressed right away. And we should work, work fast to, to get, that, get that done. And give the police department the tools they need to, to move forward. I'm also here for my taxes, okay? Uh, there's an election coming up and it's for the Board of Ed and there's money that's going to be voted upon and we need to get out of that um, the lease with the ECDC. It's costing the taxpayers too much money. Now when I give my taxes in, some of it goes to the schools, some of it goes to the, to the city. And I have a problem with this because very little, under 50% goes to the city. Whereas towns like Teaneck, where they have in different different towns, they're getting more than fifty percent of the money, so we're getting less. We've always gotten less than fifty percent, meaning meaning the schools, and and it should be more of a balance. And that's why our schools are suffering because they never got the money to do these things as it goes on. But our main concern here is to get out of that lease for ECDC. And you, Stephanie, you know how dangerous it was there. And by building the modules in front of Jackson Avenue, you can get out of that seven thousand dollar lease that we're paying them yearly, and we are responsible for all the re repairs for existence, for existence $200,000 for a handicap ramp. And some of our schools don't even have that, that, that privilege. And if the boiler goes bad in ECDC, which we're only rent, we have to replace it. I'd much rather see the boiler go in Hillers and, and, and one of our schools that we own, the one of the schools that we rent. So immediately to get us out of wasting some of that money, we have to think forward and the budget is not the referendum because misinformation has been passed out there. The budget is a working budget. It's under the 2% cap. Very disappointed with the board president what happened because they were supposed to vote on it and they didn't. And that, that strong letter that she got from the county is, was very embarrassing. And I don't want to see a, a, a takeover by the county. So people, the false information that you've been getting about the, the budget is the budget, it's not a referendum, and we need to get out of that lease. Thank you. So my time is up, and I thank you. Yes, your time is up. Um, if I may just add a comment to that, um, this is not a Board of Education meeting, so I don't want to, I don't want to belabor that point, but the issue um, as far as re relating the budget to the referendum, the issue in the city from what I'm hearing from a variety of residents is that the residents came out and voiced they their, raised their voices very loudly that they felt we were not in a position at this point in time to be looking towards building any type of new school when we had so many renovations that needed to be done in our current schools. And I, I believe that the issue with the current budget is the issue that the capital expenditure would not be going towards doing those renovations, which is the intent of the majority of the folks that voted on the referendum. And that, Kathleen, it's my turn to speak. And the, that, that, that information was publicized at the Board of Ed meeting and also was in the Bergen record where their capital expenditure is going towards the leasing of the, 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 the initial payment for lease to build for a modular school. And it's not going for the renovations. That, 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 this, that my turn to speak, we're not doing back and forth. And that is the issue I think that is kind of sticking with a lot of the folks in the city. But it's, I, I, it is everyone's right to vote, and I hope people come out and vote. It's April 16th. It's important that all voices are heard in this regard. Yes. 
Regina DePasco, Parker <laughs> Avenue. Um, we're not, this isn't a Board of Ed meeting, but I'm going to pick up on what you said because if they get the modulars for ECDC, then they don't have to pay $700,000 a year lease on it, and that money could go towards a boiler in a building. So there is, there is a method, there is a reason. And if you put the money into a boiler in a building, you're still paying $700,000 a year, plus expenses, plus repairs for ECDC. So there is a reason, there is a logic to it. And it makes financial sense, fiscally responsible to do this. But people just don't want a new school. And that's their problem, we need a new school. Now, we need school parking. That's a big issue, and it's a, the problem's being worked on, but that was something that was in the referendum plans, that there would have been school drop-off zones, it would have changed, but nope, we don't want it. People vote, voted it down. They voted it down because they got scared by misinformation. The referendum and the budget are two different things, and you equating them is misleading. They are too, an operating budget is what you need to pay the teachers, to pay the bills, and to vote that down was despicable. Now, the, what you don't know about, maybe, what you were talking about, is that the County Board of Ed sent a letter to our Board of Ed president condemning the Board of Ed for failing to pass a budget. The record never picked it up. The tap into all they care about is Hiller's, bud, Hiller's boiler, which is not the issue. The issue is that the Board of Ed, the Board of Ed got a letter that we may be under state monitor, which we would have to pay for. So defeating the budget defeated us because we're going to spend money for a monitor now when we could have put it towards Hiller's boiler. Anyway, Mr. Sims, shame on you. You should not apologize for a police officer that you don't know who it was, you don't know what he did, you don't know the story. I, I was sitting back there like, how dare you apologize for somebody else? Apologize for your own behavior maybe, but don't apologize for somebody else when you don't know it. You should know our police are overworked, they're tired, they're stretched. You just heard that tonight too, but you should have known this before. We're short men, they're working a lot of hours, they're working overtime, and they don't want to have to be babysitting parents at schools that, that are parking, double parking, whatever. They don't want to have to be called down to the schools to do this. There are other things in this city that need to be taken care of, but shame on you for saying that you apologize for an officer when you do not know the whole story. All right, if I may agree hold to... Up, hold on. Jeff, I still apologize to you for the way that officer spoke to your mother. It was unacceptable. I don't care what this young lady just said. And that's one of... I really don't care. Regina, please. And that's one of the you resolutions... Regina. No back and forth, Regina. Is what we talked about. Reject hate within the city of Hackensack. That's what we have here. Last week, Three African American churches was burnt down, and I'm proud of Hackensack for taking a stance against hate. Thank you. All right. If I may speak about the Board of Education budget, hopefully one last time. There is great concern that has been voiced to me about the direction of the capital expenditures within the Board of Education. Hiller School is a prime example because those children in the middle of the winter had to be wearing coats in their classroom because it was that cold. When you are making financial decisions about moving forward, you have to look at quality of life issues first. Yes, Padre Pio was a horrible mistake. That mistake was made years ago. Extending that one more year is not a quality of life issue. Having our children cold and our teachers cold is a quality of life issue. Roofs that need repair are quality of life issues. Flooding in schools that need repair. Bathrooms that aren't operational. These are quality of life issues for our students. And the priorities 
may be a little askew at this point in time. This is my personal opinion, not the opinion of this council, but I also am entitled to a personal opinion as a resident and taxpayer of this city. We still have not completed our re-registration. We had uh, numbers, residency checks were done. 162 families failed the residency verification. So we don't know what our problem is until all of this data is collected correctly. So let's take a step back. Let's collect the data, which the Board of Education is doing at this point in time. And let's repair our schools to the best of our ability and move forward. That is my personal concern with the spending. The, not the amount of money that's being spent, not the budget that is being spent to support our teachers and our children. My personal opinion, I'm gonna vote for the budget because I do not have enough financial input or insight into the spending that is in that budget and there is nothing that I would ever do to hurt wonderful teachers that we have, children that we have. But I am hoping it is a simple change that needs to be made. Instead of spending 1.7 million as a down payment for a modular school, let's look at and prioritize the serious quality of life issues that our children are experiencing and our teachers are experiencing on a daily basis and let's put that money to good use. And that can be done. Sorry for interrupting and grandstanding, but I, I, I think I've just, maybe it's my cold, but I think I've, I've had enough hearing about this tonight. Hi, my name is Ira Goodman. I'm at 301 Beach Street. I just wanted to make a comment about how important education is to me and to our city. And just to mention that it was such a great way to see this meeting start today, at least the public forum, uh, recognizing the proclamation declaring uh, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson's birthday, education and sharing day. And I thank the council for enabling that. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Martin Smith, 245 Prospect Avenue. I'm a member of the city's co-op condo advisory board and the chairman of the traffic safety and street lighting committee. At the June 23rd, 2018 meeting of the council, I presented information to you concerning the lack of designated crosswalks on certain streets in Hackensack. Uh, in the last year, almost since that date, we have had a proliferation of pedestrian accidents, not only in Hackensack and New Jersey, but throughout the country for various reasons. Distracted drivers, distracted pedestrians, uh, higher speed limits than we should have, not enough designated crosswalks. I'm going to concentrate on Prospect Avenue tonight. I was uh, contacted by a member of our committee who suggested to me that there might be a reason for the town not wanting to put in designated crosswalks, and that was because streets might be in line for having resurfacing done. And I agree with that assessment completely. Prospect Avenue was one of those streets. Prospect Avenue from Passaic North to Ross Avenue is in need of resurfacing. Prospect Avenue from Essex Street South to Mary Street is in need of resurfacing. However, Prospect Avenue from Passaic to Essex Street was resurfaced several years ago and is in excellent condition. Currently, we are missing designated crosswalks at intersection between those locations, Passaic and Essex, on prospect. I'm wondering if we can consider installing designated crosswalks on Prospect Avenue at Atlantic, on Prospect Avenue on American Legion Drive, on Prospect Avenue and Golf Court, and on Prospect Avenue and Berry Street. The street is in perfect condition. 
There is no reason to consider resurfacing in the near future. It's a very busy street. It is also a bus route, and we need more designated crosswalks to protest our pedestrian population. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. I know we've discussed this on numerous times and that your office is actively looking into these crosswalks. Yes. We just, as always, we have to be careful about mid-block crosswalks because we know the statistics that's, that do not support that. But thank you again for an update and more information. <coughs> Peter Marcuzani, Davis Avenue. Uh, I just want to start out again by saying I, I applaud the efforts of this council. It's been a wonderful meeting tonight. I wish I were here for the committee of the whole. Uh, I started to walk out the door and somebody came to the house and I had to stay and then it started to pour and I said I'll come at 8 o'clock. But it goes back to some of the things I've mentioned in the past and it was brought up today that if we had known, you know, I mean, the Committee of the Whole is where the action is. So all of the people that spoke today, if they were here, forget about this meeting, the input that we could have gotten would have been significant. There would have been a lot more back and forth, a little more explanation of what people had to say in terms of uh, especially the environmental project. So I would hope that in the future, uh, if, if something like this, I know the, the, the agenda's there, but it's very sketchy, the cow agenda. You don't know what the topics are. Half of them are very cryptic. So if we knew, for example, that we were gonna tell the Environmental Commission or the uh, Shade Tree Commission or any of the other, or the, or the Co-op Commission, what the topic of discussion is at the cow meeting, that may be a good place to get some good solid input. Uh, getting that stuff in advance, I think would be very, very helpful. I mean, I, I look at uh, Pedro de Vecchio, I look at Eric Martindale, I think back to all the, all the work that he did in Borg's Woods going back decades now. And we've got some very, very talented people. Uh, this council is responsible for r resurrecting these commissions, and I hope that we'll be serious in, in listening uh, to them, as, at least in terms of working with them so there's an open channel of communication both ways. Uh, I want to talk briefly about the dog park. I mean, we beat it to death. Somebody said dog park in Stye Park. Everybody applauded. I thought it was a great idea. Then I began to realize that some of the neighbors don't think it's a good idea. And one of the reasons is, is traffic. I had no idea that only in America would people drive their dogs to the dog park. You know, I thought they would walk their dogs to the dog park. But we don't do that. We drive. So there's issues with congestion, with people bringing their cars in, the noise level, and things like that. And the biggest element, I think, the biggest element is, is the, the, the trees. There's not one tree that should be cut down in Stye Park at all. And, I, and I, I don't know whether this is DMR or who did the sketching, but you just don't cut trees down in parks, you know? I mean, uh, if you're an architect, you should be able to draw more than a rectangle for a dog run, you know? I mean, uh, and where it is, I mean, the hockey surface that's there, it's an impervious surface. We have issues. We used to dump snow from Main Street in Fishkini Park. People will say we well, can't do that anymore because, you know, you have salt and the snow runs into the river. Well, we know that's exactly what happens in Stye Park. Across an impervious purpose, a surface into, Stye, into Colesbrook and into the Hackensack. So, I mean, I would say with the next meeting that's going to be held uh, for the dog park and the renovation to Stye Park, that we really go back to the drawing board. I mean, even John LeBros said, I can't believe we're spending this much money on a bathroom. Uh, some of the costs that are in the, in the proposal seem like just somebody had a leaky pen and you know, wherever the decimal point fell, that's where it was. And we know that that's what happens with some of these proposals. We need somebody like Kathy Canestrino and Jim Mangan who are pencil sharpeners who can say, that's not acceptable. We're gonna go back and rethink this. And one he, last he, thing. Sorry, yeah, not, quick question. We're, we're winding down now. You one last thing on another subject is, uh, and I forgot what it was because of my old age. I'm sorry. I, I will I mention one you. thing, though, because we did mention uh, some prayers for the people earlier tonight. My brother-in-law, Johnny Johnson, passed away last night. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, Johnny was uh, on the fire department in Hackensack for many years and also served uh, a long time as the Hackensack tax assessor. Yes, so, he did. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, Pete. Keep, keep, keep him in your prayers as well. Give our Thank regards you. to Joy. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak? Seeing none, can I have a motion to close to the public? All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None? All right, council staff. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Um, I don't want to keep repeating what was discussed, but 
for those who showed up about the traffic issues at the schools. Um, I really wish you were here for the Committee of the Whole meeting. Um, our captain did a, an excellent job of explaining some of the different things that the police department are going to try to do to help alleviate the traffic situations. Um, thanks to Scott and Pedra for forming that committee at Fairmont. It's much needed. I'm at Parker, so I can't speak um, on behalf of what goes on at Fairmont, but I could tell you that Parker is pretty bad as well. Um, and I think that the captain touched on some important things that we have to um, realize. It's the start time and the time that the children are allowed in the schools. That's a big issue um, when it comes to how many kids are trying to get in the door. Um, at Parker School, you have five minutes between when the doors open and when school starts. So you have five minutes to get all the kids into school, um, and that's, that's an issue. When we're looking at some other towns, you have anywhere from 10 minutes to 25 minutes between the doors opening and the classes starting. So when you have five minutes to get down a one-way street at Parker School to get all the kids into the building, it's going to be difficult. Um, you know, I don't think that we should be getting tickets for parking on the side as long as you're not impeding traffic. But if you're double parking, you're letting your children, you know, run across the street and preventing other parents from getting their kids to school on time, then yeah, you should get a ticket because, you know, you have to think of everyone else and the safety of all the children. Um, but I think that the captain definitely, you know, with the Board of Ed, I think we have to sit down at our next meeting and definitely discuss what can be done in regards to getting the children into school in a little bit more than a five minute time period or 10 minute at the other school. So that's gonna, that's gonna be something that's gonna be a challenge but we have to look at. Um, in regards to the dog park at Snibe, nothing is set in stone. I've, I've, I've said that over and over again. Um, you know, a lot of these projects start as a request from pre um, residents that, you know, find a need for something and, you know, want something done. And as a council, we sit and we say, hey, you know, Maybe we can explore this option and give the, the citizens something they want, the taxpayers something they want. And then in turn, there are people that came out and said, no, we don't want this. So I think we have to be open to all voices and, and hear the concerns of everybody. Um, and that's why we had that initial meeting. Nothing set in stone again. Um, we're going to have another meeting. And I welcome the input of the Shade Tree and the Environmental Commission. You guys have done you know, a great job with presenting um, different ev evidence and facts of you know, the pros and cons of having a dog park there or somewhere else. Um, but you know, it's, it's a work in progress and nothing set in stone. And again, this is all started because you know there's a, a, a want or a need expressed by um, residents in that area so we have to keep that in mind um, some good things and op the opening day of baseball is this past Saturday it was a great opening day um, thank you to the DPW for getting everything ready um, a big thank you to Jerry Reed and Mike Oates the new president and vice president they did a phenomenal job it was a great time the weather was great the kids had a great time and thank you you know, to Bill White for handing off such a, a great program to Jerry and Mike. Um, and especially thank you to all the parents who help and, and volunteer. It's a big commitment to, to coach those teams and volunteer. So we appreciate that. Um, Nellie K. Parker PTA, they're hosting a digital safety event um, on Wednesday, April 10th at 5.30 p.m. Um, it's hosted by the Nellie K. Parker PTA, but it's open to everybody. And it's going to be um, based on internet safety and, and cell phone safety for children. So it's definitely a good um, event to you know come out and learn and try to help um, with the kids. And this Saturday, one other thing, PSE and G, and this is great for the Shade Tree and the Environmental Commission. I think I sent you guys the email. Um, PSE and G and the New Jersey Tree Foundation is hosting um, a tree planting um, seminar. It's at eight o'clock at the county courthouse. Um, it's about you know how to plant trees in the right place and sustainability. I'm sure you guys know a lot of that, but it's a free event. Um, if you guys wanna go, it starts at eight o'clock at the county courthouse this Saturday. Thank you everyone for coming out and have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, Steph. Okay. I want to repeat some of the stuff which was said. If you see a pothole, the pothole hotline is 201-646-8058. I want to thank Tina, Nicole, and Pete for going up to Fairmount and looking into the parking situation. I hope along with this council we can come up with a Solution for a better drop-off system. Baseball of Hackensack had opening day this past Saturday. Um, Jerry Reed took over for Bill White after 40 years, and kudos for Jerry stepping up to the plate because 
volunteering and running a program is time consuming and uh, just overwhelmed that this young man just stepped up. There is a vote for the Board of Ed Tuesday, April 16th. May the best candidates win, along with Deputy Mayor, I'm voting yes for the, for the budget. Also, I have a problem. Laura Rodriguez is the president of the Board of Ed, and she voted yes for the budget, but she keeps getting banged in the head. I don't know why, but my prayers are with her. Good night. Thank you for coming out. Thanks, Dave. Well, the first thing that I want to say is related to my neighbor, Mario Trubini, that he just passed away last Saturday. You know, rest in peace, Mario. And related to the program that we got around the schools, I support 100% the police department for what, I am, for what they are doing. I've been there many times in that corner, and for instance, I got this picture here, the way the parents, they are parking around the school, and the only thing they're doing, they're putting their own kids in danger. We are lucky that so far we don't have a dead kid in that area because they are passing between cars. The parents park the car on the right side, and then they let the kid cross between cars. They're already moving, okay? So if somebody's doing something like this, they really deserve a ticket. I support the police 100%. For the greenhouse, I like what they are doing, and we're going to try to help you in everything we can, Gary, and you will have eventually your greenhouse, you and your friends. And there's no question that we are working with the schools and the police department that way we can improve the school drop-off in all the schools, because that's a safety issue. The dog park, like uh, Stephanie mentioned, is nothing definite in that. We're going to look and we're going to see the best we can do. And let's, let's face it, you know, as most of the people don't want it, we're going to listen to you guys, okay? And the three, the three problem is that sometimes we got three, they really old, and they present a danger to the residents. So we had to get a person that really know about trees, and then we had to prune the trees, you know? Paving. We got a problem now with the water company that they're going to start replacing the lead pipes, so be patient, but the money is sitting there, and the moment that the company, the water company is going to start finish the repair, we're going to be right behind, and we're going to pay the majority of the streets. Mm -hmm. And the problem with ECDC, that problem with the parking maybe is going to improve the moment that the m, &M building is going to be finished maybe in a month, so they, I think it, we, they're going to have enough parking. Thank you for coming. Be safe. Thank you, Leo. Again, it was our pleasure to present the proclamation in response to Education Day. It seemed like a rather apropos tonight. We didn't expect to have so many folks coming and talking about school issues. Uh, that's normally not what we hear here. Um, but again, we're here to listen to all of the problems that, that, that are being experienced in the city. Again, I agree with everyone that spoke about it. Uh, I am very pleased to see that our police department has stepped up to the plate and is looking at proactive plans and, you know, not short-term fixes or band-aids, but a real plan to address some of the traffic issues that we have around our schools. Again, with safety being a number one priority, because these are our most prized possessions. These are our children. And, you know, both Stephanie and myself do meet regularly with the Board of Education, and I'm very confident that this, between the, what the traffic division is proposing and what the city can do and what the schools can do, that we're going to come up with a, with a plan that's going to be one that's going to protect the children and also be a real plus for the, for the parents as well in dealing with some of these pressures. And we appreciate feedback from the committees that came and spoke about this tonight as well. The dog park. You know, we go back and forth with a lot of things. People come and make presentations to us. We look into them. 
we get the facts, we present them to you, and we continue to listen. And that's what's going to happen here. You know, we're, nothing is carved in stone. We've been working on all of our parks throughout the city. You know, going through, they were many of them needed repairs or upgrades or just making it current with with what's you know in vogue and what people are using and what sports are are, are, are really being accomplished here in the city. So Sty Park is one that needed some updates, and we're going to make sure that we get them done and we get them done to the satisfaction of the residents here as well. Uh, you know, I always talk about if there's anything on the agenda that had to do with redevelopment. There were a couple of things here tonight. Um, one of them was talking about 17 Mercer Street. If you're familiar with Mercer Street, you know the old Colonial Storage Building. It's an old, sturdy brick building there on Mercer Street, 17 Mercer Street. That is being renovated. So, you know, we, I love when we hear these things that we're not just tearing everything down and rebuilding, but we're actually taking the time to take sturdy buildings and renovate them. So they're doing a renovation there and there'll be about 31 units there. And uh, they're, they're very gung-ho on what they're gonna do. They're actually gonna add, I think, two floors to the top of it to accommodate it. But again, that will be a nice renovation there. And um, the other one on here was something we've talked about before, which is on 77 River Street. Uh, that's down, that's what's across the street from, if you know Solari's Restaurant, it's there. It's kind of that odd shaped green building. And it's a, it's a very irregular lot. And a climbing gym is going to be going in there, which I think will be a wonderful asset to the city to have something new, something different. It will be of an Olympic scale, so it will attract people from other areas as well as provide a nice facility for our own residents to use and enjoy. So those two things, were, again, were approved here tonight. Uh, other thing, we had some new appointees to our zoning board and environmental commission on, on tonight. We're still looking for another uh, zoning board alternate. And please, folks, you know, that want to be involved, get involved. If you go to the city website, any of the openings on any of our boards are there. You just have to fill out an application form as to what board you're interested in and, and jump on board and participate with us. We, we would love to see more people participating there as well. Uh, we had Hackpack, the, the Hackensack Performing Arts Center, closed out its Pack the House series. We do a, a higher level Pack the House season each year, five or six major events. Uh, the last one was Mark Cohn walking in Memphis. I remember the, the tune, Grammy Award winner for that. We had a packed house. The house was sold out. It was a wonderful way to end the season again and bring great recognition and a lot of people into the fine city of Hackensack. Everybody forgot about the Easter egg hunt, April yeah, 16th. April 16th, Johnson Park, 4 o'clock. Easter egg hunt. We do that every year. I think rain date would be the 17th. 17th. Right? So, again, you know, bring the children out and, and have them enjoy and collect all their Easter eggs. So that's another thing that the city enjoys and, 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 is, and is happy to do for the folks. Again, thank you all for coming. Uh, we'll stay here as long as anyone wants to talk to us. We appreciate your being here. We appreciate all your contributions. And get home. I hope it's still not raining. And have a very pleasant evening. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. I have a motion to close? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, folks.